Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for part three of the fiscal year 2022 CSPG annual report webinar series. My name is Monique Alcantara and I am a management and program analyst here within the Office of Community Services Division of Community Assistance. Before we get started, I would like to go over some housekeeping items. First, everyone has been muted on entry. Second, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please enter those using the Q&A function on Zoom. We will have time to address these questions at the end of the webinar. And this Q&A is what the presenters will be monitoring. Third, this webinar is being recorded. The recording along with a copy of the slides will be posted to the OCS CSBG webinar page, also linked here, and we'll link it again at the end of this presentation. Today, participants will learn about the reporting requirements, which, is, which, should, uh, which should serve as a refresher. Uh, we'll also discuss things to consider as you're preparing to submit module one, and then some next steps. And with that, I'll hand it off to our branch chief, Verna S. Thank you so much, Monique. And good morning or good afternoon uh, to all of you again, and welcome to our third, I believe if you count the December kickoff, the third, um, the third in our annual report webinar series for fiscal year 2022. Today we'll focus on module one. However, if you missed it um, last week, I would encourage you to go back and um, listen to the how to prepare webinar. Um, I think you'll find some, some great information in that webinar. Before laying the foundation for today, I do want to make sure everyone received the OCS notice detailing the 200% federal poverty line uh, provision for CSBG eligibility, which was released on January the 6th. Um, the intent of that communication was to ensure that the network was informed that you have the flexibility based on your state rules to continue serving persons who are at up to 200% of the federal poverty level for fiscal year 2023. So hopefully um, everyone has received um, that information. To draw us in for today's training and technical assistance though, I wanted to share the thought that you see on the screen. When accountability is present, people keep their eyes on a very clear prize. They know what they are working toward and how they are going to get there. So as we continue to think about how we portray the success of the CSBG network collectively as well as individually through our data, we cannot afford to lose sight of the prize, which is individuals and families experiencing low incomes, having access to the best available resources and having the ability to navigate out of the causes and consequences of poverty. We are accountable for working towards that outcome based on section 672 of our legislation under the purpose and goals, which outlines that we are working for the reduction of poverty the revitalization of low-income communities and the empowerment of low-income families and individuals to become fully self-sufficient. That means we're also responsible for reporting our progress. So as I mentioned last week, submitting the annual report is a, is a requirement and is clearly outlined in Section 678E of the legislation and a critical part of our performance management framework which we are rebranding re under PEAK, which is for us performance evaluation, accountability, there's that word again, accountability, accessibility, and knowledge. So I would encourage you to listen attentively and actively engage today in the chat or the Q&A function. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna check the chat right now to see if you all said anything to me when I said good morning or good afternoon, because if we were in person, we would expect you to talk, clap, cheer, or do something to demonstrate your responsiveness. So I'm going to move out of the way and go check what's going on in the chat, but I'm leaving you in the hands of three well-able Division of Community Assistance colleagues, Monique Alcantara, 
Catherine Maddox and Norris Phillip, who will lead you through the rest of the webinar today. I would just say I'm believing that we're going to see excellence in our annual report reviews this year. So I'm thanking you in advance for your early or on time and complete submissions of your annual reports. So let's get started with the webinar. Monique, I think it's coming back to you first. And I'm going to go check the chat and see what's going on. Okay. Thank you, Verna. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we will first discuss reporting requirements and why we report. Some of this should serve as a refresher if you were able to attend some of our earlier webinars this year. Um, but of course, we want to make sure that we review them again. So here is, it is, the CSPG Act Section 678E outlines the requirements of the CSPG Act, including the requirement to submit annually, provide a measured performance of the state or Section C, D, G, H, and I, an account of expenditures of funds, including administrative costs or Section E, and a description of training and technical assistance offered by the state or Section F. The fiscal year 2022 CSPG annual report um, is due on March 31st, 2023. States are expected to submit the annual report, including CARES and the disaster supplemental reports together. There's no extension for the CARES or disaster supplemental. OCS wants to ensure that how we collect information across these reports are streamlined and coordinated as possible. We understand that there are unique challenges administering these funds, um, which have been particularly pronounced during the pandemic and as we're starting to ease into the new norm. Um, and for some states and eligible entities, the additional challenge of responding during disasters. So uh, states should already be familiar with the integrated strategy OCS is using to collect the information for the annual report However, we do understand that there are some new administrators and this may be the first time. So we do suggest that you do refer to our CSPG Action Transmittal 2023-01, the submission of, fiscal, of the fiscal year 2022 annual report. And don't hesitate to reach out to your program specialist if you have any questions um, and need help. And we will provide contact information at the end of this webinar. Just to emphasize or re-emphasize why we report, um, and this may be familiar to you if you uh, were participating in the webinars last year, this is truly a shared responsibility across the CSPG network at the federal, state, local, and national levels. It is so important that you work with your internal and external colleagues when completing module one. While in the CSPG state plan, you do report your plan for your next year, Module 1 gives you the opportunity to show how effective you were in implementing those plans. OCS uses this information to then show stakeholders and an agency's efficiency, effectiveness, and overall financial condition, as well as to inform future training and technical assistance. And we hope that the states are using lessons learned as they're reviewing their state plan and preparing their Module 1 to also inform future training and technical assistance and implement best practices and lessons that they learned throughout the year. There have been increased conversations about outcomes management, performance management, and evidence-based practices. These are becoming a gold standard in the public sector, and we want to make sure that we are staying up to date with these standards to show just how much CSUG matters to the fight against poverty. As a reminder, this is the final year of CARES reporting for most states. If you're a state that reported on the federal fiscal year or the calendar year, this is your final year of reporting. If you're a state that reports on a state fiscal year or if you're a small state as, um, as outlined by the minimum maximum allotment provision, your final year will be next year. And just remember that we're considering the final report a reconciliation of your CARES expenditures, resources, and outcomes. Module one reporting strategy and overview. This has not changed from um, last year, but we did want to remind you that the state administration module or module one 
For the regular CCG annual report, states will report as normal, including all funding sources. For the CARES uh, supplemental annual report, this is an extension of your regular CCG, CSCG report. So it is solely focused on CSCG CARES supplemental, including the allocations to CSCG eligible entities, state usage of CARES supplemental funds, and lessons learned. And then also for the disaster supplemental report, again, it is an extension of your module one, which should be focused on the CSPG disaster supplemental, also including allocations to eligible entities and the state usage of disaster supplemental funds and lessons learned. As you may recall, module one provides key information on how funds are distributed across eligible entities, state assessment of compliance with organizational standards. However, we don't um, ask for that information in the care supplemental or disaster um, solely because we are expecting that information in the regular CSPG annual report. Which brings me to our next slide. Um, the reporting period for all for the CARES, CSPG, and disaster is October 1st, 2020. Ooh, that date's wrong. But October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. We'll make sure this is updated before it's posted. Um, the regular CSPG report does include all sections, so section A through I, including administrative information, goals and accomplishments, eligible entity updates, org standards, state use of funds, state training and technical assistance, state linkages and communications, monitoring corrective action and fiscal controls, and ROMA, and CARES and disaster reports are simplified versions of module one. When you're reporting for your CARES and disaster, we are looking for how you use CARES and disaster to complement or extend your CARES, um, your regular CSPG funds. So you should not um, just report the same thing that you're reporting in your regular CSPG and report. We are looking to see how you may have done something a little different or um, extended the, the use of funds. So for the statewide goals and accomplishments, we're looking specifically for those care statewide goals and accomplishments in your care supplemental and report. Uh, state use of funds for cares and disaster, we're looking for state use of funds for cares and disaster specifically. While in the regular CSPG and report, you should include cares and disaster in the report out of those funds. Uh, same with state training and technical assistance. In the regular CSPG, we're only looking for regular CSPG state training and technical assistance. For CARES and disaster, we're looking for the specific training and technical assistance for CARES and disaster. Um, and I won't continue repeating the same thing, but it goes regular CSPG with the exception of state use of funds. You should only report on your regular CSPG. State use of funds should include CARES and disaster. And then for CARES and disaster, you should only be reporting on CARES and disaster for all of the reports. And just one final pre-populations reminder, for the CCG annual report, module one, um, if you had a two-year plan that you submitted in fiscal year 2021, the second year will pre-populate the CCG annual report. For um, if you had a two-year plan or one-year plan that you submitted in fiscal year 2022, the year one data will populate the CCG annual report. For CARES, the CARES state plan will pre-populate those uh, sections and the CARES annual report. And with disaster, the previous disaster annual report will pre-populate the new disaster report. With that, we will, uh, I'll hand it over to Catherine to go over some things you should consider. Thanks, Monique. Appreciate it. Uh, great to be here and thanks everybody for joining in this afternoon or this morning for you. So um, let's take a look at some overall tips um, on the next slide there. Monique mentioned some of these, but just want to um, reiterate for you. So when looking at the report, we recommend that you consult with various departments uh, about achievements, for instance. Um, you could consult with your fiscal team or other departments, making sure you have a comprehensive uh, view and um, report out. Um, also, please consider feedback from outside sources. So this includes your American Customer Satisfaction Index Survey, the ACSI, uh, feedback from OCS on prior reports, and other input from your eligible entities. Also, please consider insurance perform that you're um, ensuring performance improvement. So considering ways to improve year upon year at the state and local levels. 
Um, this includes assuring accountability and outcomes. So sometimes there may be differences year to year, as you know. So please double check from prior years, check if there's some red flags that may come up. Um, and we review your prior year's report as well as the respective state plan to see how the information lines up. And we will ask questions if we see some inconsistencies. A final check, of course, you know, please do one last review uh, before hitting that submit button. Um, please ensure that all the sections are addressed and look for consistency and also provide unique responses to the respective fiscal year. And lastly, please make sure your plans are up to date. If you had a de-designation, for example, or you changed your CARES Act budgeting, please make sure your plans reflect those changes so that you're reporting out in a consistent manner. Okay, so now we'll take a look at each of the sections one by one. So looking at section A, state administration, uh, please only update this section if there's been a change from the state plan. In particular for A1D, uh, please include the authorizing official's name and contact information and not that of the CSBG point of contact. Now looking at section B, statewide goals and accomplishments uh, for B1, progress on state plan goals. We are looking for any progress on state plan goals. It's great if all goals are, accompl are accomplished or completed. However, we understand if all goals are not accomplished as we consider particularly over these past few years. Um, but please provide an ex explanation if that is the case. And as you know, we are looking for continuous improvement across all of the network and we wanna hear about your lessons learned. And so as to a further reference point on this, you can review IM 144 about the state and federal accountability measures. Looking at B2, that's about the eligible entity overall satisfaction targets. This section applies to the ACSI survey results that are typically conducted every couple of years. And this is an opportunity for eligible entities to provide feedback on the work taking place at the state office. So when completing this table, please note that the future satisfaction target should not be less than the current target. Responses to this item allows OCS to ascertain whether and how the state's response to feedback from the ACSI improves customer satisfaction among their eligible entities. So encouraging higher targets over time should allow for states to take a continuous improvement approach for increasing customer satisfaction. And please see IM150 for further background on the ACSI and the use of this tool as a great way to improve network effectiveness. Now let's look at B3. Uh, that's about CSBG eligible entity feedback and involvement. We ask that you please provide a clear description of how the state has implemented changes based on feedback from the network or other sources such as from OCS or the ACSI survey. OCS uses this information to learn more about how the state responds to the needs of local communities. And you can see the CSBG Act Section 676 uh, for further background about that. On B4, state management accomplishments, please share a top management uh, accomplishment achieved by the state office over the past fiscal year. Please take this opportunity to brag about yourselves. We hope that you also take a chance to celebrate your successes with your team. OCS would like for states to reflect on the past year and celebrate the successes along the way that you've achieved. Some states may not typically take this approach or see the effect of their management um, and its impact on the efficiency or quality of the work. In these instances, OCS hopes that states will take the opportunity to reflect on their work and set new management related goals for this upcoming year. With B5, uh, CSBG eligible entity management accomplishments, Please allow your network to use this chance to also brag about their work. Please provide some specific examples that come out of the network. Including this, by including this question, we at OCS are encouraging states and eligible entities to take a performance management approach to their work. Incorporating effective management and leadership skills can help improve internal processes, services provided, and strategies for serving individuals and families. And lastly, for this section, <clears throat> in section B6, this is your chance to highlight innovative solutions that are coming from all across your network. Please be sure to spend time on this section. With this item, OCS is encouraging states and eligible entities to stay current on the available research describing innovative solutions for alleviating poverty. And please incorporate that research into your program design and in turn have a greater positive effect on individuals, families, and communities. 
This question allows the state and their eligible entities to keep their focus on the end goal of CSPG to address the causes and conditions of poverty in their communities. Okay, so now over to section C. Uh, this one is a little more straightforward um, regarding any updates to your eligible entities. Please click yes, no, or mark for delete as to any changes that are, are taking place among the entities. A change would include if you are in the process of de-designating an agency, and mark for delete would be if you have de-designated an agency since the submission of your state plan. If there has been a change, please provide a short narrative of the situation. And keeping us at OCS apprised of any changes allows us to work together with you to make sure all counties continue to be served. Now moving to section D of the report, uh, organizational standards for eligible entities. In particular, looking at a few items here, item D2, uh, organizational standards performance. In the progress indicators table, please ensure that each local eligible entity is counted only once for each category within the number that met blank percentage of state standards. You will note that there are five different categories. And to ensure that you're reporting unduplicated numbers, please confirm that the grand total of these categories is equal to the number of entities assessed. OCS poses this question to encourage states to continually strive to have their local eligible, eligible entities meet 100% of the standard. As noted in the questions from the report, it is also helpful to know how a state responds, including any TNTA offered to an eligible entity that is not meeting 100% of the standard. For example, if and when a state decides to implement a, a technical assistance plan and how we at OCS can help provide any further assistance to the state. <clears throat> For item D2B, as to the percentage meeting the org standards by category, this breakdown allows you at the state level, as well as us at OCS, to look at the results in the aggregate and tailor TNTA accordingly. And then lastly, for section D, looking at the technical assistance plans and quality improvement plans that may result as you're looking and reviewing your organizational standards. This item provides OCS with the latest information on TAPs, CLIPs, or corrective action plans that may be taking place for some entities in regard to org standards. As you're aware, noncompliance over time in categories such as financial operations and oversight may potentially lead to de-designations or funding reductions down the road. As needed, OCS has been available to assist states on addressing such areas. Please see IM 138 for more information about the organizational standards. And now I'll pass it over to Norris. Thank you, Catherine. So for section E use of the funds, the reporting period for the FY22 annual report for CSPG regular cares and disaster is October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. There are three separate reports to be submitted. And I wanna clarify what information is to be completed in section E of each report. When reporting in section E of the regular CSPG annual report, we want you to include the 90% pass through, the state administrative funds, and the discretionary amount for CARES and disaster if received in the CARES regular report. For the CARES, I'm sorry, for CSPG regular report. For the CARES annual report, the information in section E is to include CARES only funds. And in the disaster supplemental report, the information is to include disaster only funds. On the next slide, I wanna go through the different sections of section E, uh, starting with E2, actual allocations. This is the amount of funds actually allocated to the 90% in the year being reported on. When completing the CCPG regular report, this should include CARES and disaster 90% allocation as well. Under E2 obligations, this is the total obligations of current year funds which is the FY22 award. These obligations should not include carryover from any prior year. We are looking for how much was spent of the allocation awarded to the subrecipient. Uh, I'm sorry, awarded to the subrecipient. And this may be higher than the actual allocation of funds if the state provides additional funding to that subrecipient. On E4, OCS prefers that you follow the state's definition of obligations and again stick to the current year funds 
that it was obligation during the FY22 federal fiscal year. So that would be again, 10-1-2021 to 9 2022 This would include the state's administrative funds allocated for a CCPG regular, CARES, and disaster if you received it. In general, we do not have we do not have a specific requirement of what constitutes an obligation. So each state has the authority to use their own rules and laws. If a state does not have a definition of what an obligation is, uh, we would go with uh, has a commitment been made on behalf of the state that the other party has a reasonable expectation that the state would pay that expenditure. But most states have a definition of what constitutes an obligation. For E7, uh, use of remainder and discretionary, please do not include any amounts reported in E2 or E4. For some states, we are aware that state legislator has some allocate 95% of their CCG funds to the subrecipient, which means you would enter zero if you have no discretionary funding. In the CSPG annual report E7, this would include actual obligations of discretionary funds for regular CSPG, CARES, and disaster if received. On the next slide, um, prior year carryover, E9A, this is the amount that should equal to the obligated and not yet paid to the sub recipient at the end of the previous fiscal year. This is just the amount forwarded from the FY21 CSPG award second half of that grant period. In E9B, this should equal the authorized amount less the, author, the amount paid to the recipients and drawn for state um, expenditure. This amount should reconcile to the balance report and the payment management system and to the SF-425 federal financial report, which is due in December. What we're looking for is how much will be carried forward for obligation into the second half of the FY22 CSPG award. I will now pass it back to my colleague, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Norris. All right, looking at section F, this is about state training and technical assistance. And this chart outlines the requirements across the various reports uh, with only the activities, um, that first line, um, that first row uh, is where there's the difference across the reports. So please see that the C regular CSPG report will include T and CA activities provided by all funding streams. So that would include CARES and disaster as well if applicable. And the CARES report should just include the T and TA funded solely by CARES dollars. And the disaster supplemental report would only include T and TA funded by disaster supplemental dollars. And so for all reports, please include T and TA that comes from your administrative and discretionary funding. And as a reminder, the reporting period is from October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. Throughout this section, OCS is emphasizing the importance of training and technical assistance. Whether provided directly by the state office or indirectly by a contractor, training and technical assistance is a critical function of the state CSPG office. And as you are aware, training and technical assistance should be made available to all eligible entities in a given state and can be tailored to particular topics as appropriate. So now on to section G, state linkages and communication. We'll take a look at a few items here. Um, G1 relates to linkages, uh, coordination at the state level to ensure access to services. This question allows states to select multiple options that reflect what linkages and coordination efforts were conducted. Please select all that apply and measure, I'm sorry, please select all that apply and ensure that responses align with what was outlined in the state plan. So throughout this section, OCS would like to see how states help leverage CSPG funding to better serve individuals, families, and communities in need. Looking at G3, CSPG eligible entities, uh, linkages and coordination. This uh, item focuses on the local level coordination efforts, whereas G1 and G2 focus more at the state level efforts. In G3B, states should also describe if there were service gaps in communities and whether and how coordination across community partners helped to fill those gaps. 
right, looking at G5, coordination among CSBG eligible entities and the State Community Action Association. We know that the relationship between the state office and the state association is critical. And we ask that you please provide additional information that clearly describes the coordinated efforts between your state community action association and eligible entities. To effectively coordinate and link services, we recognize the importance of communication in the CSBG network. And we would like to see how the state office, the state association and eligible entities are working together to better serve their communities. On G6, this is regarding feedback to CSBG eligible entities and the State Community Action Association. The state should provide clarifying information on how the state provided feedback to their eligible entities and or the association regarding the state's performance on the state accountability measures. States can include the method used to deliver feedback, such as through work groups, emails, conference calls, as well as any outcomes of providing this feedback. This question allows for you at the state office to take and implement a continuous quality improvement approach to activities related to achieving the state accountability measures. As a funder of eligible entities and often of your state association, the state office should ensure timely and objective feedback on a range of topics to help your network continue to make progress toward those identified goals. And I'll pass it over to Norris now for section H. Thank you, Catherine. So in section H monitoring schedule, what we're looking for is a brief description of the state's process. It's just a matter of sharing what happened during that reporting period and why. If you perform monitoring outside of your triennial cycle, uh, please provide an explanation as to the condition. Uh, was it a, a follow-up visit or was there a particular reason? Did the agency have some issues with other federal awards? Did they have significant turnovers? It could be a matter of an agency that was scheduled but was not ready for a monitoring visit. Uh, what we're looking for in this section H1 is an, uh, to understand the engagement you have with your subrecipients to better understand the risk and challenges being faced. In H6, single audit review, we are looking at the Federal Audit Clearinghouse to reconcile what is reported when we are reviewing the CSPG annual report. What we're looking for as part of our review is that everyone that is supposed to have an audit had one completed and that those things are reported, including all findings. I wanna note on March 19, 2021, OMB had issued guidance, um, I think it was M2120, that recipients that had not yet filed their single audits with the Federal Audit Clearinghouse um, as of that date of the memo um, for the fiscal year ending on or before June 30th, 2021, could delay the submission of their single audits to the clearinghouse up to six months beyond their normal uh, due date. Uh, please include those audits in this annual report. And when we're talking about the management decision letter uh, within the single audit review, we are only referring to CSPG findings at the entities. We don't get that many of them, so it'll be easier for us to keep track of. Um, and if something doesn't look right, the calculations aren't right within the smart forms, uh, please send us an email uh, before you submit to address that issue. I'll now pass it back to, I think, Catherine. Thank you. All right, the last section of module one is section I, and this is about the Results-Oriented Management and Accountability System, or ROMA. And for those of you newer to CSBG, ROMA or another performance measurement system is listed in the statute um, in section 676. So looking at item I1A, uh, this should be answered only if the response to I1 was that the state utilizes ROMA. OCS would like to know whether and how ROMA facilitates enhanced data analysis and evaluation among, the, among those states that choose to use ROMA as their performance measurement system. Now at, uh, at I3, state review of eligible entity data, the state should provide additional information that clearly describes how it reviewed the CSVG eligible entities performance management data as part of the annual report process. This information should include what steps the state took to ensure that the data submitted were accurate and complete. OCS wants to ensure that states are taking the time to review, analyze, and clean their data prior to the final submission to OCS. And having a thorough process for data analysis ensures that the information reported in the annual report is accurate and representative of the work 
that the CSPG network conducted throughout this past year. Please see section 676 of the act and IM 152 regarding the end report for further detail on this. Item I-4 is about the state feedback on data collection analysis and reporting. And states should indicate yes or no as to whether they provided written feedback to CSBG eligible entities on their progress toward meeting their ROMA goals. If the response is yes, then the state should describe their process for providing timely feedback to CSBG eligible entities. If the response is no, the state should provide clarifying information that describes how they plan to provide more timely feedback going forward. And under the state accountability measure uh, 5SII, it is a requirement for states to provide each of their entities with timely feedback on their in report data within 60 calendar days of submitting their report. This question allows OCS to assess whether states are able to meet this requirement, and if not, think through what TNTA may be helpful for states going forward. Our last item, item I5 is about state and eligible entity continuous improvement. You've heard that theme throughout this um, webinar, continuous improvement. And Roma is all about that. Please provide two to three straight what activities the state office and eligible entities and or enhance their service delivery. When you respond to this, it may be helpful to include information on why a state or entity decided to conduct a particular activity or service. For example, please consider what data informed those continuous improvement activities. Throughout this section, OCS would like to ensure that improvements to service delivery are driven by the data that's available. This question allows OCS to gauge whether and how states and entities are making use of their data to inform everyday decision making, as well as identify any training and technical systems needs around data collection and analysis. I'll pass it back over to Monique. Thank you so much. Thanks, Catherine and Norris. Um, that does end our module one things to consider. As I stated earlier in the presentation, we will review our OCS contact. So if you have any questions about this presentation or as you're preparing your module one, you can reach out to your assigned program specialist. We have Jessica Kane for region seven, Renika Carr for regions one and two, Isaac Davis for region six, Jamia Furbush for regions four and seven, Andrew Colley for region three, Catherine Magic, Magic, she is Magic, but Catherine Maddox for regions five and nine and Jake the five for region 10. We also have our oversight and accountability branch, which includes Norris Phillips, Angie Kelly, Lindsay Chatfield, and Saya Satin Brooks. OLDC is now available to submit modules one, two, three, and four through the online data collection system available via grantsolutions.gov. If you experience any technical issues, please contact myself, Monique Alcantara, and my colleague, Nikki Frazier. We always ask that you uh, copy both of us on the email to ensure that we respond as quickly as possible. Our next webinar is next Wednesday, January 18th at three o'clock p.m. Eastern time. This will focus on modules two through four, You'll learn more information as you prepare to submit modules two through four. CSPG eligible entities are also invited to that webinar. So feel free to share that registration link linked here. We will send a reminder notice as well. And it's also available via our CSPG events page. Speaking of, we have had some questions about how to find our CSPG events page as well as our CSPG webinars page. So from the CSPG homepage, you can scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a list, uh, a menu list, including CSPG grant recipient resources. If you click that plus sign, it'll open up a new menu, excuse me. <coughs> and under that new menu, you'll find our toolkits as well as, <coughs> sorry, as well as the events calendar and the CSPG webinars <coughs> for this year. <coughs> My apologies. I saw some questions about last week's webinar. While the recording is not available, the um, <laughs> while the recording is not available, the PDF slides are. Next week, I'll make sure that I include some slides about how to maneuver that CSPG webinars page. But the 
PDF will be available via the CSG webinar. And with that, we will go into some questions. I'll ask everyone to come back on camera. Um, the first questions are about uh, the recordings and the presentation links. So those are available through the OCS webinars page. We are going through five-way compliance review for the recorded webinars, but those should be available shortly. As well as the Word document version of module one, my apologies, I know that we promised to have that to you last week. We were focusing on the opening of OLDC, so that will be a focus point uh, for this evening and tomorrow so that we can get that to you as quickly as possible. Um, I'll ask Norris to answer our next question. How is CARES dealt with in this section as it crossed multiple years? So I am going to go back to that slide while Norris answers. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for this recording period, uh, it may be the last for many of our recipients, but uh, the CARES annual report crosses multiple years. So there will actually be uh, two previous annual reports to be completed for the CARES reporting since it first was issued on March 27, 2020. Um, so for that, that's how you would actually report uh, across the multiple years. Any questions on that? No? Okay, so I will move on to uh, Adrian's. I got a question. Um, in addition to um, allocating additional funds, what we're looking for is that you would identify how your funds were actually dispersed um, after it was issued to the state. So if the state does not utilize the entire 5%, uh, please identify where those funds are being um, added to. So if it is within your discretionary TTA, uh, just report that because for us in the annual report, this is how we would track how the funds are being dis uh, spent at the state. Um, let's see, no questions. Thanks, Norris. Uh, I think there's yeah, one for, more question for you. For this annual report, where are the dates for the audit to be acceptable? Um, we're looking for all single audits uh, within this reporting period. So it would be all outside um, 9 30, 2022, and any additional by the time that you are reporting um, the annual report to us. Additional? Okay, thanks. Of course. Thanks, Norris. I'm not seeing any additional questions for you, but if more come, we'll ask you to come back on. Awesome. Uh, we do have a question about the org standards. When report, when we're counting how many agencies met org standards in each category, are we able to count how many applicable standards were met by public CAAs? If not, our percentages seem low because they're calculated based on total, total number of agencies assessed. Um, as Catherine mentioned during this uh, presentation, IM138 has a set of standards for public um, public agencies as well as nonprofit. So you should be, when you're counting the standards, you should be assessing them for, uh, for the standards that are meant for them. So there is a set of standards for public agencies and a set of standards for nonprofit. And so when you're assessing, only assess based on those and you can count them based on the assessment for that. Um, and please let us know if you need additional clarification to any of these questions. Um, <clears throat> will the recordings be made in the future? Yes, they will. We'll we're gonna get them posted as quickly as possible and we'll announce as soon as they are posted. Norris, we do have a follow-up question. If CARES already obligated prior fiscal year, we don't report it here, correct? If there is no uh, prior year reporting um, in E9B, um, so that's where you've already obligated and there's none less to obligate for this previous period, then you would put zero. That's correct. Uh, we do have another question. Do we use the most recent module one template for 2022? The most, yes, you are using the most recent module one template. We also did include a PDF of the template in the Action Transmittal 2023-01. So it is available uh, to you if you visit our communications page. And we were asked again how to receive a copy of the presentation. A copy of the presentation is available 
on our CCG webinars page. It should be available no later than tomorrow. I am not seeing any additional questions, so I am going to pass it back to Verna Best. If you do have more questions that you think of, again, feel free to type them in if the webinar is not complete. And if uh, the webinar is complete, feel free to reach out to myself or your program specialist or your financial analyst. Verna? So Monique, I was gonna give everybody a break and not say anything at the end of the webinar today. However, I was sitting here taking notes. Uh, I would just say that I hope it resonated with everyone on the sections of the annual report, especially those that dealt with continuous improvement, as well as feedback and engagement. I think those were um, those were important as is all of the annual report. I also made a note, um, I forgot which section it was in. Um, I didn't mark that because I would give the specific one, but you all will know. But if an eligible entity is being de-designated, you actually should not be waiting to let us know that in the annual report. That is information that should be communicated very timely. Um, with our office and with your program specialist in particular. So I just wanted to make sure, and that's just not for a de-designation, that is any significant changes, any concerns that you're having, any TNTA need that you're having, please, please, please utilize your program specialists as your first point of contact. Um, I also would just highlight the emphasis of um, training and technical assistance throughout the network. You know, OCS has... I uh, put a major emphasis on TNTA with the release of the survey last year and how we're going to be using that information so we cannot underestimate the value of training and technical assistance. Other than that, I would just like to thank my colleagues, Monique, Catherine, and Norris for doing a great job. Thank you all for your questions and your attentiveness during the webinar. Certainly, if any additional questions or concerns come up, reach out to us. Um, outside of that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And again, I am fully expecting excellence in these annual reports that will be received by or before March 31st. So thank you all very much and have a wonderful rest of your day.